This is the breaking news tonight. We've got a copy of the letter, and in it, um, you get an idea that family members knew there was something going on with Chad Daybell, that things were not right. And somehow his belief system had strayed away from the church, from the LDS church. But was he trying to bring other people along with him in addition to Lori Vallow, who ends up being, of course, Lori Vallow Daybell? Let's bring in um, Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter and Court TV special contributor Ashley Banfield. They're both with us tonight. Um, Chanley, this letter, uh, um, pretty amazing. Let's explain a little bit more about um, who wrote this letter and why it was written. Well, Vinny, it's been confirmed by multiple sources that the person who wrote the letter is the sister-in-law of Chad Daybell, Heather Daybell. What we know about her, she, of course, she's married to Chad's brother, Matt, and she writes this letter. It was drafted at the request of the stake president there. Now, a stake is a group of congregations or wards in the Mormon faith. So Heather is the local stake leader of the Relief Society, the church's women's organization. And this letter was sent out via email uh, August 12th to stake members in Fremont and Madison counties. Now, she talks about in this letter a lot about the personal journey for her family, how it was like a punch in the gut, uh, what was happening in, happening in her extended family, obviously referring to Chad Daybell. Let's put some of it up on the screen here. She says, I have racked my brain over and over wondering how it got this bad, how my relative could believe in ideas that go directly against the doctrines of our church and, and come to church each week as though all is well, that he could get others to believe those teachings and follow him. Those teachings could ultimately lead to the death of innocent people. Now, this letter goes on to quote a lot of scriptures. Her women's group was going through this study, and she was sort of applying it to her life over the last several months. And it goes on to infer from the scriptures that her relative was deceived by false spirits and said, quote, I don't understand why a family member of mine has done what he has done. Now, again, this was circulated throughout the stake uh, there, uh, several congregations in Fremont, Madison County, the Rexburg, Idaho, Henry's Fork Stake. And we have a graphic also to put up to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like on the map. Now, likely Heather's letter reached a couple thousand plus members of the stake there, likely much more because emails can be forwarded, they can be shared with household members, all of the like. So the church symbols there, that is, that's the LDS stake center or the stake center meeting houses. That's what the church symbol is. You see there on the, on the graph, there's where Chad Dable's property is. And of course the red outline, that is the stake area. And she's the local leader there and the email reached all of those people, of course, Vinny, bringing big questions to mind in this predominantly Mormon area. How will this possibly taint prospective jurors there? Yeah, I think that is one um, possibility here. I mean, because you're talking about the two areas where all this is taking place, Madison, Fremont County. Uh, we know them well through your reporting and covering this story and covering this case. Ashley, um, what, what I find fascinating about this letter is it seems like family members recognized that there was something going on with Chad Daybell and people who were very devout um, and, and very religious and, and you know, follow the teachings of their church noticed that Chad Daybell was off the rails. He was, he was not following the church teachings. He was going somewhere where they, she even concedes in this letter that it seemed like it was dangerous. It was a dangerous place where he was going, Ashley. Yeah, and I was so fascinated to read. Uh, by the way, it is a long, long letter, four pages printed out. So uh, all the way through, Heather Daybell says she needs to get things off her chest, and she sounds pretty tormented over a lot of this. She also sounds extraordinarily pious because she uh, quotes scripture all throughout this letter to all of these followers. Um, but there was this one little moment that that I really sort of, I, I took a sort of a double take and I thought, I don't know that all the Daybells are on board here. I think there's this, this schism in between Heather and her husband, Matt, and the rest of the Daybells over what's going on with Matt. And there's Matt and Heather together, Matt's brother, Chad, 
it was sort of like right after where, where Chanley just left off, she says, I don't understand why my husband and I were blamed and ostracized by our extended family in trying to warn and bring attention to the huge concerns we had about what was happening. I don't understand how we were so unbelievable. And he, meaning Chad, was so believable. And I, I got to wonder if anything has changed or if the other family members are on board and supporting Chad and just brother Matt and his wife Heather have moved on and said, we are really troubled by our family member. Just to, to remind you, when I was doing the story a few weeks back about uh, Chad as a grave digger, um, in the research, uh, I was looking up the fact that uh, Chad, his brother Paul, his brother Matt, who's married to Heather, who wrote this letter, um, were all grave diggers together when they were young and in college at Brigham Young. It was expected that the younger brother, uh, Brad, was also going to join them in the grave digging. So there's four brothers all in the grave digging business and that maybe even Becky, the little sister, may one day go into the field. So of the five Daybell kids, we certainly know where Matt stands. But now I'm really curious to find out about Paul and Brad and uh, Becky and where they stand. And, you know, it reminds me a little bit of Melanie Gibbs, right? Because Melanie Gibbs, someone close to Lori Val, but she realized things were off, things weren't right. And it seems like Chad's sister-in-law likewise recognized this fact that was obvious to her, but not obvious to others. And other members of the church, I guess, were, were perhaps listening to what Chad Daybell was saying and, and following him. And, and Chanley, you know, this is the second letter now that we've been um, talking about dealing with the, the local LDS um, in that area and in this particular case. Can you remind us about what that first one said, who wrote it, and how that and this letter could potentially um, impact where this trial is going to be held? Yeah, absolutely, Vinny. Last week, we brought our viewers the letter that was from the first presidency of the Mormon Church that was sent out on a particular date, Chad Daybill's preliminary hearing, August the 4th. And it was basically a reminder that the members or leaders of the church shouldn't be involved in any sort of court proceeding without first coming to the church leadership. So here we go. We remind leaders and members of a longstanding policy that the church leaders should not involve themselves in civil or criminal cases regarding members in their units, quorums, or organizations without first consulting church legal counsel. However, well-intentioned church leaders sharing information in legal proceedings can sometimes be misinterpreted and even damaging. So following the church's policy also keeps the church from being inappropriately implicated in legal matters. Well, the LDS released an official statement regarding that letter that was sent out, especially due to the timing of it and people reaching out to the church saying, does this have anything to do with Chad Daybell's case? They deny that. The LDS church says that, quote, a letter from the first presidency dated August 4th was sent to local lay leaders worldwide, reminding them that the church's longstanding policy of seeking advice from church legal counsel before becoming involved in criminal or civil proceedings related to members of their congregation, this policy is intended to help leaders in their ministerial role to all those they serve by not appearing to take sides in legal proceedings and to avoid implicating the church in legal proceedings to which it is not a party. This policy is included in the general handbook and similar notices have been sent in recent years to reinforce this policy. So that sort of brings up the question with this letter, obviously from church leadership at a stake uh, covering a lot of area in East Idaho, how that would apply to possibly this letter, Vinny, because it's about a legal proceeding, it's from a church leader. Is it in conflict? Yeah. Uh, you know, Ashley, the more I think about this, and, and, and I think one of the big issues in, in figuring out where this trial is going to be and who ends up on this trial for the defense is going to be the LDS issue. I think it's actually helpful if you can find LDS members who can be fair and impartial and base their verdict, and, and I trust most of them probably can be fair and impartial. Um, and, and understanding the LDS and the Mormon religion would be very helpful for a juror in this case based upon the testimony that they're going to hear in the case involving Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow Daybell, 
their beliefs and where their beliefs ended up uh, compared to where the church is. I think it's actually helpful for the jury to have some LDS members on it. Yeah, I think it is as well. Um, and I also, um, I think it would be really unfair for um, a lawyer to suggest to a judge, uh, anybody who got this letter is tainted and can't be on the jury. I, I think that's just nuts because honestly, there's nowhere in this letter that Heather actually says, uh, my brother-in-law did it. No, she just says, I don't know what's happened and I don't know if this could have happened or if innocent people could have been killed. So while it's not great, I definitely think it's something that, you know, people would read and they are smart enough to discern that this is a family in turmoil. Um, they don't have all the facts, but in that courtroom, they likely would get all the facts. I think clearly it will be something that Chad's attorney can use and can try and can certainly ask upon board dear, perhaps if someone in Fremont or Madison County uh, received the letter. Um, but I do think that, listen, I, I know plenty of LDS members who are pretty solid of mind and they can uh, be pretty analytical of evidence um, and they could sit in judgment of somebody fairly without question. I just don't think that it's uh, necessarily yeah. going to prevail for Chad's lawyer. Yeah, and, and I think they'll be very honest during voir dire. I think they'll be extremely mm -hmm. honest uh, during voir dire mm -hmm. about whether or not they can be fair and impartial. All right, Ashley Chanley, we'll be talking more throughout the program. We've got a lot to cover tonight, folks. Three hours, crime and justice.